Um, so again, we were really excited when we saw these interesting kind of applications and, and the social kind of uh, networking that was happening. So in addition to that, there's lots of other kinds of projects on Scratch. This one's really hard to see. I'll remember that next time. But this is basically a tutorial for Blender. Uh, Blender is an open source uh, uh, piece of software that's, uh, that's really cool for making 3D models. Uh, but there's also the Scratch survey. Somebody wanted to know what people liked and didn't like about the Scratch community. So uh, what they did was they made it uh, this project that invited people to take a survey and connected to an external survey service so that then people could sort of say what, what kind of improvements or changes they would want, which was really interesting for us to read as well. Uh, and there's also SNN. So this is the Scratch News Network channel. And this is the episode that they created. It's not animated in this, but it was uh, online on Scratch when Scratch reached 1 million projects shared to the website. So in the, in the course of researching how kids um, use Scratch and, and what they get out of it, we've found a lot of really interesting quotes that, that we think kind of typify what we were hoping would happen with this tool. So this is a 13-year-old girl who's saying that she likes Scratch better because there's an opportunity to create stuff, right? You're not just kind of like chatting with your friends or, or sort of being passive and absorbing the different information. You can make your own kind of uh, creative expression. And, and she found that to be really empowering. And we found it to be validating. Uh, there's also an 11-year-old boy who says that he loves Scratch because it taught him how to have a programmer's mind. And this is one of the things that we wa really wanted to see with Scratch, is we wanted to see if we could, we could help kids sort of learn to think systematically, think like a programmer. It's not that we want everybody who uses Scratch to then grow up to be uh, you know, an operating system designer or even an open source contributor, although I hope there's some of those. Um, but I think it is important that people learn how to think this way because all around their environment, they're surrounded by um, systematic computational artifacts. Like you go to the grocery store, well, those doors just slide open magically. How does that work? Well, there's a sensor and there's a program. And I think it's important that people have a good sense of how those things work, uh, even if they're not designing them, just because it's good to be literate. Um, so, so far, the Scratch website has uh, 748,000 members, uh, not all active at once, thank goodness, or our server would go down. Um, 215,000 have created projects, and there's 1.6 million projects uploaded to the site. And this is since we went live in 2007. Uh, so it's turned out to be pretty popular. A lot of people have really gotten into it um, and created interesting stuff. So the, just to give you some of the statistics, so this is about the, the amount of projects that are shared per month, and we're about 60,000 now, 60,000 projects per month. And about a third of these are remixes. So that means that they're projects that somebody downloaded an original, made a couple of tweaks, and then shared it back to the website. So we do see people kind of using and riffing off of each other's ideas, which is one of the values uh, that we wanted to communicate. There's also a lot of conversation and comments going on on the site that sort of have to choose a different scale because it dwarfs the amount of projects that are created. Um, the main people using Scratch uh, age-wise are like between the ages of like 9 and 15 is kind of the major part of the curve right there. But as you can see, we have a really long tail. There's some geezers like me down there and some even older, somebody 69, I guess. And probably goes further than that, but that's all we could show in the graph. Um, so uh, who is creating these projects? Well, it was really important to us that girls felt empowered to program. And so that was a, a lot of, that was um, some of the reasoning behind a lot of our interface choices. We didn't want to make it be like lightning and guns, and this is something you can just make games in, because we thought that then basically probably mostly boys would get into it and maybe girls would not. So we wanted to make it sort of uh, inviting to, to girls and boys. And we've had some success with that. We'd like to have more success. But as you can see, it's maybe 25 30% uh, female in terms of the users on the site. And the people who are contributing Scratch projects do so from mostly all around the world. Europe and US are the, are the major spots. Uh, don't have much penetration in Africa yet, but we hope that with OLPC that might change. So since so many people are using this, we decided we would create um, Scratch Day. And Scratch Day is a worldwide event, and it happens on May 21st uh, this year in 2011. And basically, anybody who wants to, who likes Scratch from anywhere in the world, can organize one of these events and put on uh, a place uh, for everybody to get together who likes Scratch. And we think that's really fun. And, and it's also important because you actually get to meet these people that you may have you know, talked to online in person. And that's usually really exciting. Um, so what's the philosophy behind Scratch? So we call, we call the, the, the sort of guiding principles that uh, 
that inspired Scratch, design-based learning. And design-based learning could be described just with this little learning spiral here, which Mitchell Resnick uh, described or wrote a paper on, who's the leader of the Lifelong Kindergarten Group. So it starts out with imagining. So you think about something that you want to make, and then you create it. You make it. You make something happen, right? And then after that, you play with it. You sort of see how it works. This is sort of like Legos. If any of you guys have had experience with Legos, this is kind of a description of that process. And we think that process is great. So we just kind of wanted to make the Lego thing possible with programming. Uh, and after that, maybe you'd share it with other people. You see what they think. Like, you know, did you have fun with this? You'd reflect on it and like, well, how did this work? Is this kind of what I wanted? Do I want to make an improvement? Is there a new idea? It uh, could be anything. And then after that, you're back to the imagined state again, and you're sort of thinking about a new thing. So it's an iterative process that leads to interesting and really cool designs uh, and cool content. In support of this with education, we've created a site or an online community, I should say, called Scratch Ed. And the way Scratch Ed works is any teacher who wants to can create an account on Scratch Ed. And they have access to all the other resources that have been shared by other teachers around the world. Uh, so it could be like instructions on how to give your first Scratch workshop. It could be anything from assessment, anything that a teacher might need. And you can also, of course, if you're a teacher, share your own materials. So this is sort of like open sourcing not just the code, but the teaching materials and the philosophy behind it. And anything that's on there can be used by anybody else who finds it. So we think this is an interesting experiment. We've just hit 3,000 registered teachers, um, and it's turning out to be really popular. A lot of people are getting a lot out of it, so we're very happy about that. So in terms of open source, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into remixing on Scratch, because this is sort of more relevant, uh, I think, to, to what's going on in this conference. How many developers are here? OK, great. So remixing is basically when you have this original Scratch project, it's going to say the name of the creator down there, Fandy Biao. And there's always this link, so you can download that code and check it out. And then you can reshare it to the website. And if you reshare it, then basically it goes under your name, but it says based on a project by the original creator. So we, we think that's an important part of, uh, of the open source thing is that attribution works well. So we actually created a, a visualization that shows the relationships between like original projects and remixes. So this is a little video that's going to go from the latest project. This is the latest one Jill makes through Kalina Stars. And so this is a different version of Tetris with cherries. And here's Tetris with this little Linksy cub. It's sort of hard to see because it's so big. Uh, there's a Tetris that got removed. And we're almost to the original first one. This is the, the one that split off to hundreds of generations. And now we're back down to the original Tetris. So we see that people have these networks of relationships where they're reusing code and reusing each other's ideas, which I think is an important value of open source. And so we're, you know, we try to encourage that sort of thing. And this is, through this visualization is one of the ways that we like to do it. Um, and of course, like every open source community, ours has absolutely no conflict. It's great, isn't it? Just being open source, nobody ever fights. Well, that's not quite entirely true. So this is a conflict that we do see um, fairly often on the site. Um, and it's, it's about remixing, says, I choose friends, I just got mad because you remixed some of my projects and didn't give me credit at first. So credit turns out to be really important in the Scratch kind of ecosystem. And we thought that when we added the automatic credit giving, that kids would be cool with that. Oh, cool, it automatically gives me credit. But what we found out, um, and most of this is through research by Andres Monroy Hernandez, who is the lead developer of the Scratch website and a PhD candidate, is that people um, don't accept automatic attribution. They don't, it doesn't count as much as manual attribution. Like when you actually take the time to write in your project notes, this is an idea based on an idea by somebody else, then the original creator will be more accepting to it. But if you just depend on the system to say automatically, yeah, yeah, this came from there, well, it doesn't work as well. And we see some of these conflicts cropping up now and again. This is something that I really I want to think about ways to improve on Scratch to, to really sort of convey the values of open source better. This is the way we do it right now. We have this license to play page. And it basically goes through the Richard Stallman metaphor of uh, a cake and a recipe, saying that you know if, if you make a cool recipe, you should share it with other people. And anybody else can use it that wants to. And that leads to better and more interesting uh, recipes. But um, well, I think that this is a great argument for adults. Um, it's, it hasn't been as com so compelling to kids. And so how to create so, sort of some way of uh, articulating the value of sharing uh, on Scratch website is, is a challenge. And we're constantly working on it, uh, trying to think about better ways of doing it. So we talked about remixing, which is essentially kind of like forking, right? So you take an original and you fork it off into hundreds of other copies. 
Well, what about collaboration? Well, collaboration is something that we're trying to work on and improve in the next version of Scratch because we want it to be possible for a lot of people to work on a single project. So it's the opposite of forking, which is sort of spreading out into a lot of projects. And this is like 30 people can collaborate on one project and just make it really awesome and really complex. And luckily, there were some Scratchers that actually thought of this before we did. So there are Scratch companies formed several years ago. This is one, Grey Bear Productions. And uh, they worked together to create a, a very uh, exciting and, and um, looked forward to Halloween application about a haunted house. Um, and since then, we've also been creating a Scratch Collab Challenge, which is basically something that we said, anybody can enter this challenge. The only rules are you have to use these three images, and you have to work with more than one person. And our sort of ulterior motive for doing this was to, to try to find out you know, what was that process like for them, see what we could learn about how that works, that sort of collaboration on a single project, so that we can make this, the next version of Scratch work a lot better to encourage that kind of thing, because we're interested in seeing it. And again, this is you know, another powerful idea from the ideas of uh, open source software. So one of, the, um, one of the coolest things that I've seen, and it's very much related to open source as well in Scratch, is uh, the Scratch OS project. So, I'm going to give a little video here uh, that's showing Scratchsoft OS version 1.1. When I first saw one of these several years ago, and I thought, oh, that's kind of cute. What it is is essentially they made their own little simulated operating system in a Scratch project. So it takes a little time to load, even though that's not really necessary, but that's what real OSs do. And, and then you can see down here you've got a little menu bar. You can control things. I can bring up Draw It, which is my little application in my operating system, and I can draw a picture with it, right? Oh, uh, you know, that's kind of cute. And, like, kids are just kind of playing around and everything. <laughs> but, you know, I, I didn't think it would really catch on or it would be a big thing. But it turned out a lot of kids really wanted to do this. A lot of kids thought it was kind of empowering. So there was further generations. So you can run Scratch in this one, but it tells you, oh, Scratch is already running. You can also go to the music section and application and play a little bit of guitar music. <laughs> 